everybody, and welcome to Tuesdoid, your one-stop shop for all things Project Zomboid, and it is not on Monday, unfortunately. The blog, of course, went up on Monday, but I'm a day off, and why is that? Well, let's be honest. I work a job outside of the typical, and I have bizarre hours. But that's beside the point. Welcome to Tuesdoid this week, and we have a hell of a blog post with a lot to think about, a lot to talk about, and some cool stuff to show off. So, it's called Window Panes, for good reason. But before we get to that, they're doing that whole um, chit-chat form of blog post. You know, Andy talks to Chris, etc., etc. I think I just tapped my mic. I apologize if there was a bop noise. Anyway, um, so they kind of start just talking about how they're getting really close. And this is like the first few paragraphs of the blog. And this is the part that I think most of you are going to devour up. Because, of course, what is our biggest fear right now? Or not necessarily our biggest fear, but what's our biggest want? Well, we want the game, right? And how close are we? Well, the way they make it sound, we're really close. Um, you know, in, in terms of relativity, of course. You know, we're not saying tomorrow the game is going to come out. But we're talking... I would... I would guess um, we might have something in our hands, if I had to guess, a couple, maybe a month, maybe maybe a little sooner, maybe a little bit later. Um, but what's interesting, and you, I highly suggest, as always, to go read this, because there's also a video you're going to want to check out, is to take a look at the paragraph, is what we want to look, and they say, how close are we, you know, to this, this actually RC3 hitting? And they, they use an interesting nerd analogy, which I love. Um, but if we, they go, if you took a look at the Return of the Jedi movie, uh, we're at the point where the Millennium Falcon is preparing to shoot the core of the revamped Death Star with only the thrilling escape to follow, meaning we're very, very close. Um, so they, they talk about, you know, it's, it's going to be a wait, but they've got some plans to make the wait less so, and if they didn't m ensure those plans, then we would be looking at maybe another month on top of what we already have to wait. And a lot of people, if you go to the general forums and people are starting to theorize and wonder what exactly that means. Why are we going to get it earlier as opposed to later? And to be honest, if you look back at the blog post and you look what's been causing them a lot of issues. We have lighting, we have weather, we have fire, and we have the metagame. All of which have really kind of delayed a lot of the progress and uh, animations as well. But that's kind of kind of be wiped away uh, very shortly. So you think what's causing all this stuff to be delayed and and you know again me being the kind of guy that I am I like to go check out you know the the forums and a lot of people are saying well I think it's the meta game they're going to be delaying the meta game and I I tend to agree actually with those theories the way that they make it seem is that the meta game is is a very intricate and large system to kind of implement into this game something that's not going to go in smoothly or perfectly primarily it's going to be what is the meta game all about well, it's about NPCs so what exactly are we looking at right now well I would say the metagame or NPCs are going to be the thing that's going to be removed, um, and we'd probably see a release, like a pre-release of RC3 to the closed testers, followed by us, the public testers, to, um, to play with. And then as we work out bugs, we'll see the implementation of NPCs in the metagame again. And I think that's really um, what's, what they're trying to allude to. Of course, they're going to detail it later. But if we were to look and theorize about what they're kind of talking about, I would say that that's our closest bet. We're looking at um, a removal of some intricate feature that's breaking the game at its core and uh, implement a re-implementation of that game uh, or of that mechanic, rather, once it's ready to go. And, uh, you know, if, they're, if that's what they're doing, if they're going to remove the NPCs or the metagame and get it out to us so we can start bug testing this thing um, via public or private or whatever... Uh, I really think that, me personally, I'm okay with that move. I mean, it's a little de depressing that we're not going to see all the cool NPCs and metagame stuff right away, if that's indeed what's happening. Um, but I'd rather have a smooth launch after RC3, so when it officially hits Steam, um, than one that's a buggy, complete mess, kind of like Towns was when it hit Steam. Um, I'd rather see RC3 come out to us to test and figure everything out before we worry about it. Besides, the sooner we can get our hands on this thing, the better. But that, let's, let's move on from that. One of the other things they talk about that they've been talking about for many, many blog posts at this point is the animation system. The animation system has been a huge, huge overhaul. And uh, obviously it's been uh, a pretty big overhaul in general for the game from the ground up. But one of the big things is the way the animation system works. And they're talking about one of the cool things that allows you this, this game is going to allow you to do. And in fact, what we're going to do here is show you um i usually don't like to show the video i like you guys to go to the blog and i highly suggest again go to the blog and read it and watch the video again yourself but what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the video because it's so short and it's hard to talk about 
exactly what they're implementing here without actually showing the video before we get there they're just talking about how many animations they have like 173 megabytes worth of animations into the system at this point that's a whole lot of animations as far as uh, other things that they're talking about um as far as gaming making the it more like game feeling with its controls but that comes after this so the cool thing they've done is this so we're gonna we're gonna watch it here in the actual window and if you want to see it full screen go to the blog go watch it it's really awesome so let's pop this open and let's watch So I don't know if you could tell, but she's trying to open the window here. And she bashes it open with her shoulder and climbs through. So in that short 18 seconds of video there, where there's a lot for us to take in. Primarily, um, she ran into a, a building. Uh, zombies were coming in, and she had to get out. She ran over to the window. And instead of just opening the window, like always, actually we saw an animation of her reaching over, an animation of her trying to lift the window, which wasn't budging, then an animation of her throwing her shoulder into the window, and then another animation of her actually climbing out the window. It was 18 seconds of pure bliss. That was awesome. And, oh, and she started bleeding because she bashed the window open, which is very important. So, what does that mean? It means... The animations they've been working on so hard are finally being implemented into the game, meaning things are actually happening. The fact that you can't just run to a window and open it up and run out of it is awesome. Actually, one of the cool things that I really, really like and that they talk about in the blog is that in this current version that we have of the game, the current build, the biggest problem is that the tension is kind of uh, kind of uh, diluted a little bit and um, the... The fear isn't quite there, and the reason that that's happening is because you can walk into a building and just open all the windows and run out any side you want. In this, with the way the game's going to be working now, windows won't always open, they're locked, and if you need to get it open immediately, you're going to have to bash your way through it. Not only cutting yourself and hurting yourself, but meaning that window will always be permanently open and no longer a safe route to escape. A lot, I know, that's a lot to, talk, to kind of think about, but that's huge, because again, it adds to that overall tension that's been lost in recent builds, and it's and their whole idea of bringing it back. Also, uh, weather seems to be back in, and uh, it's just looking really, really, really solid. Other things they talk about in the game, uh, they talk about gamifying the controls, things like having the F button do what you would usually do in any game, making flashlight. If they ever implement maps into the game and you have a map in your backpack, hitting the M button, open up a map. Uh, having context buttons, so if you hit a certain button, it will be the, inter in the interact button, etc. So really, really cool things that are just going to be coming as the game comes out. Um, but primarily the two big important things with the animation system, which just looks great. I highly uh, urge you to go to the blog and watch the video. And on top of it, the idea that potentially we'll be seeing the game earlier than they anticipated with or without something removed. So uh, that's Mundoid this week. And next week I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty good one. Um, I'm really excited to see what's coming. How, I mean, I feel like we're literally just counting the days at this point and I feel I've been feeling like that for many weeks as I've been doing these mundoids for quite a while now um, but either way I hope you enjoyed it I hope I was able to help those out who weren't necessarily able to actually go to the blog and are at work um, and if you are the first to pop over to mundoid and this is your first time over here I hope you stick around I have so much to offer on my channel um, and I highly suggest you stick around if not and if you want to if you're only here once a week I look forward to seeing you guys next week this is Matt the signing out I'll see you guys later